enough. Well, let, we'll get to the question part now because this is going to start to uh, set the stage for talking about going into the season because everyone's season is starting in a week or two, whatever. So for this particular kid, um, how do you suggest a player handles his nerves uh, when it comes to possibly playing old teammates that have the disposition to go after him in a game? So yep. let's start with that one. Yeah. Um, 90, 95% or 98% of all things that you fear never happen. And when they happen, it's usually not as bad as you think it's going to be. That's what I would first say. A lot of it is in your head. A lot of it is chirping. I'm not saying this isn't happening. I'm saying that this is probably a false evidence appearing real. Look at the freaking quotes today. <laughs> no, but but that's typically what it is. And, and and so that's that goes back to this is where moms and dads and coaches and players can be on the same page together. Like this should be, as I call it, psychology or mental toughness 101, right? It's always, this is like one of the best lessons anybody can take, not just for hockey, but for life is when you start thinking about things that could happen or might happen or, you know, you start thinking about the future too much, then your thought process could get out of hand. And what can they do is put you in the state of mind, just as this family is right now, saying, what if, what if, what if? Well, what if my aunt had a set of nuts on her? She'd be my uncle, right? You can, what if it, what if it to death? So, Number one is, my first thing is control what you can control. Be in the present. Don't worry about what could happen because it could and it might not. So if you spend your time focused on that, that's the, you know, they're going to be out to get you. First of all, I know the, the, this, this boy, and if you can catch him, good luck, by the way. That's number one. Kid can wheel. He's a very good hockey player. So that's number one. So I don't want to say his name, but you're better than probably most of these guys anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it. Um, but the main thing is to focus on what you can control on and, and worrying about or getting anxiety, because that's basically what it is, over what may happen because of what a couple kids said is, is, is I can promise you it's a, a waste of your time. Yeah. It really is. It's, it's go out and just go play the game. Yeah, and I think my, for me... For this particular kid, just because I know the kid, nice kid, reminds me of myself when I was a kid. Just nice kid, smiley kid, likes playing. If you can, as the parents, if you can start to instill a little bit of that grittiness, where uh, not not in the sense of like going and taking a whack at them or something, but just like not backing down, even though you're scared, it's just a good exercise to do because. For, I mean, as the parents too, like, you know, like n nothing's really going to happen. Like they're 11 and 12. Like, what are they going to do? Right? And to boot, there's not a, a lot of box, but there is no body right. checking. So there's physically nothing really could happen. Right. So, so what are, what are they going to do yeah. really? Right. Yeah. So for, as the parents, that's something where you can use it as a teaching moment to maybe what I would say to an older kid, maybe it's a bit much for this kid, but you can try to sharpen me up here. Um, as Steve Ott says, most people bluff. And like start learning to call some bluffs, even though he's whatever age he is, younger. Um, I think that could be a good exercise to try to start doing because you're gonna have to do it later anyways. So especially if the kid has he's a little bit on the side of feeling nervous or feeling scared about things, starting to get him to face that now is just good practice before it becomes a really like deeply ingrained habit as he's older when the game actually is tough because right now he's too young for the game to be tough so from his perspective obviously it seems like it's tough and it's scary and all of that but yeah it's a new parents, experience right as the parents you're watching it knowing like these kids are young like there's not a whole lot they can actually do so it'd be a good good practice for him to start to deal with that you yeah. know so guys bluff man so i don't know is that is that too much to say to no, a younger kid no or? but the, you 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 said it in a, just a, a different way than i was going to say is like it's a really good thing to understand is like what you need like said it to my son i say it to anybody that i train is 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 talk is cheap and guess what most people love to talk but most people don't back their stuff up anyways so i always like to say go about your business do it very quietly and let your actions do the speaking because you, we talk about it, how many games we go to in the OHL where guys are the toughest guys oh, with know. their mouth, Just yap. but they will not do one thing. There's a very small percentage of guys that actually will do anything. So 
I, 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 I'm always a big believer of keep the pie hole shut. And then if you do want to take a run at me, my stick will be across your head or it'll be across your arms. You won't want to do it again. Cause I'm not backing down. So as you said, um, number one, this is a, the dichotomy of being a, a, a competitive athlete, especially in a physical sport is that we raise our kids to be nice and polite. And, you know, depending on parenting, sometimes like my wife, for example, uh, Charlie and I'll be talking about something and she'll be like, okay, but you're going to be nice to these people. Right. And it's like, so I, I get defensive. I go, it doesn't have to be nice all the time or sports sportsman, like all the time. Sometimes he needs to go and chop someone's ankles. Don't worry about it. Or if, if someone rubs them the wrong way off the, uh, on the, on the streets or whatever, the streets, like yeah, the streets. we're from downtown <laughs> Detroit, right? <laughs> no, but like if outside of the hockey rinks, you sometimes you have to stand up for yourself and it might be abrasive and I apologize. So what? So like there's that dichotomy is you want to raise a nice person that you can take out in public that people like and respect. And, but you know what? Sometimes, oh, well, oh, well. And it's, it's, it's hard to do because we want our kids to be good people. Um, but you should always be capable of that. You should always, you have, should have that ability to stand up for yourself and like kick some ass if you have to. And then that doesn't mean you're going to beat somebody up or get beat up or put yourself in a bad position because you're being stupid. Like that doesn't, that's not what that means. But like just sometimes it's called for. Sometimes there's like aggression and even violence is called for in whatever the situation is that you're in because you need to protect yourself, you know? And if you can't do that because you're just harmless, like that's no good. No, you no, know? you want to have the, yeah, the you, you, you know, you, talking's not the way though. So we've seen this in so many games where guys yap and yap and yap and they tell them, we heard the words, I am going to kill you. I am going to kick your ass, but you could have, and you didn't, but you like to talk. So it's like most guys won't do anything. It's a very small, willing, uh, small percentage of people that are even willing to. So, so the advice for a parent and the kid is number one, stay in the moment, stay present, just do what you can do. Don't control. Don't think too much in the future because it's probably not going to happen anyways. You're not playing a, a game at a physical level yet. So like, let's think about that, go through that. It's not pro nothing's going to happen. There's refs. There's, it's actually a safe sport for the most part. And, and, and then just go play your game. And then as you said, have some bites so that all the guys that are yapping, if they do physically try to, to not harm you, but get in your grill, give it, give it to them. And they, these are not like, some guys don't have that in them right away, but learn the little baby steps. It's like, take the low hanging fruit as a, as a player. It's not going, going, uh, put someone in the hospital, but it's like, if someone gets in your grill, like it's the little things of having your stick ready all the time. So that when someone does come at you, you're protecting yourself and maybe look at it that way. You're protecting yourself. And, um, people will respect, you can chirp all day, but people respect the people that have action or I'm not going to say action, but at least don't back down. And it's, it's something to learn. And, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a process. It yeah. is. It's just a process. And I, that, that's, that's a good way to, to put it too. It's not about, because I'm not, like I said, I said, you know, there's time and a place where that stuff has to happen, but I'm not saying you have to go from zero to you get in a fist fight tomorrow. Right. But it could just be your first step is just standing, not skating away. You know, you didn't do anything, but you stood there and the kid was yapping and you stood there and you didn't show like that you're weak where they can come do it again because they know it's a free pass. It's like nobody gets a free lunch around you. That's a good thing to try to. That's a good quality to try to have just as an athlete. Like there's no free lunch when people are around you. That doesn't mean you have to be the toughest guy ever. But it's just they know showing up is half the battle. Just showing up, it's man. more than half the battle. Just showing up. I'm gonna tell. Yeah. Actually, I'm gonna tell. That, I want to tell that story about because we were talking about fights this morning, and I remember my first one. I think I've, I might have mentioned this story before on the podcast, but I was 15 when I got my first hockey fight, and I had never been in a real fight before that, other than like boxing training stuff, which is not a real fight. And I remember the kid that I fought was supposed to be like a tough guy at my junior camp, right? You know, and he was, he was chirping the, our bench during the red and white game or whatever it was. And, uh, I was kind of looking for somebody else to like go and do something for this kid. And I'm just like, no one's doing anything. So I'm like looking down the bench, like at the older kids. Cause I was 15 at my first junior camp. Right. And this kid was older and I'm waiting for somebody to go to do, say something, even nobody, nothing. So for whatever reason, I started yapping them back 
And then next thing I know, I'm fighting the guy on the ice. And I did fine. I did fine. He, like, he definitely won the fight. I got my first black eye, which I thought was cool. But I was like, that's the tough guy? Yeah. I'm like, this is the guy that everybody's scared of? I'm like, so, that was fine. So go you back know? to the original statement. Yeah. 98% of the things you think are going to happen yeah. don't. And when they do, they're not as bad as they... Right. They're, they're never as bad as you thought it would be. Yeah. And it's just that, that willingness to stand in there. Like, that's what I realized that, that day, like, after that fight. I was like, just, just be in there. You'll, take, you'll beat 90% of the guys just standing in there, you know? And, and if we bring that down to a lesser scale, it doesn't have to be a fight. But it's just, like, say something for yourself. You know, you got something to say, say it. Stand in there. You know, give the guy a little shot. And, and you might get one back, and it might hurt. And that's just, it is what it is. But you'll be okay. Like, you know that you're going to be okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah, people make it, like, even just with hitting and hockey, a lot of people take – but they inst- they actually instill inst uh, instill I told you turn up truck uh instill f- instill fear in their kids because they make it bigger than what it actually is it's just a hit it's just it's not a big deal um so anyways the other thing i was going to say about that is like the, the talking part is talk, talk is so cheap and isn't it something like when you watch for me, I always back off and I go like, this can bite you, man. It's And it's going to eventually. Is when you, I, li- I love UFC. I love it so much um, for various reasons. But what I, what I don't understand, and I understand the entertainment purpose of it, but when people chirp on how they're going to knock someone out, like, like Conor McGregor, for example, every fight he's going to predict the knockout, blah, blah, blah. But when you get your ass handed to you in that fight, talk, talk meant nothing. It meant nothing. Like, that's what I loved George St. Pierre as a fighter. His guys would just try to just get him, and he would sit there professional and just he, – and he said, I'm not a good chirper anyways. Yeah. But the bottom line was, he, 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 you'll, if you're going to knock me out, you'll knock me out. But I'm not going to say a word because it, it's just embarrassing. Yeah. Well, so, I think Khabib was like that too. He didn't yeah, say a whole he lot. Was and he would just ground and for pound sure. you. Like, He'd just say, I'll just smash you. Yeah, I'll just smash your yeah. face. No Three problem. words. Yeah. I will smash you. Yeah. yeah. Three words. Four <laughs> legs. Four. <laughs> Um, right. Yeah. So that, that's great. I think, uh, ho- I don't know if that is necessarily the, what you thought you were going to get in terms of advice on this, but hopefully that's something useful that just it's the last probably, part. I think it's, uh, I think it's honest though. It is honest because it's, that's the honest that's, advice. The thing is, yeah. is that I would never want to be less than honest about something like that. Cause we're dealing with a kid and, and because we've all been there, I don't care who you are, unless you're not human, you've been in situations where you had fear and it's a, ma- it's a matter of, understanding where fear in George St. Pierre's book talks about this a lot, but did you understand where fear comes from? That's number one. Like, so you can learn this at an early age, right? That's why parenting and uh, coaching is very helpful in these situations is to explain stuff like we did. If the kid hears this 50 times over the next two years, they're probably going to be able to deal with things a little bit better. But anyways, fear comes from mostly your imagination, right? And, 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 um, and then learning how to not run from fear, but addressing it. And you just become, you can just do baby steps. It's just, it's huge. It's just the honest way to do it. Because we just say fear, don't worry about it. That's not an answer, right? Yeah.